and welcome to SDC 2021. I'm Rochelle Alvers, Chair of the Scalable Storage Management TWIG, as well as the Storage Management Initiative. Together, these two organizations develop, promote, and support the Swordfish specification. I'm going to talk in this presentation about the Swordfish Conformance Test Program and just give an update of an overview of where the program is and how it's built and hopefully some get you, your interest peaked to uh, engage with us on this. So what is Swordfish CTP? Anyone familiar with our previous program for SMIS has, should have a leg up on understanding what we're doing with the Swordfish Conformance Test Program. There's a lot of similarities between the program. So Swordfish CTP is, however, being developed at, as a vendor neutral test suite to validate conformance to the Swordfish spec, as well as conformance to the Redfish spec. We really have tests that cover both sides. We leverage a lot of that as well, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. We use the Swordfish spec, Redfish spec, and the Swordfish profiles as the key elements that we're tar targeting to determine compliance to the spec and the schema. So those profiles that we've developed, I've talked about in some of the other presentations as well, these define the required subsets of functionality that implementations can advertise as customer features. And they do that through a features registry in, the, in their implementation under slash redfish slash v1 slash registries. Each feature then corresponds to key customer functionality and is advertised to the clients. This is a really coarse grain functionality. Do you support discovery? Do you support block provisioning? Do you support event notification? There's coarse grain uh, capabilities that a client can easily then translate to the functionality they expect to see in the implementation. The Zorkfish CTP is also built using open source tools. So we leverage a lot of pre-built tools from the DMTF team, the Redfish Test Framework, the URI Validator, the Service Validator, Protocol Validator, and the Interop Validator. Like I said at the beginning, we're checking conformance to the uh, Redfish spec in a lot of respects as, as it is the basis for Swordfish. Then we move on to using the Protocol Validator um, or sorry, the interrupt validator with the profiles, as well as some additional custom built tools to extend and uh, the, extend a test suite and use that to verify some of the Swordfish specific requirements. This is things such as the Swordfish features test, which we've just talked about what those are for. Uh, we also have some other tests like a capacity source test that extends the capabilities of the overall test framework. We are targeting with Swordfish CTP a, to get to a completely automated test submission, validation, and publication process. But we're really just getting started, and I'll give an update on where, where we are in that process in a little bit. So why do CTP? Well, it kind of depends on your perspective, but if you're coming at it from the vendor or manufacturer side, this really will help you reduce your integration costs with partners. You've done all this base work, you've done the testing um, before, they even, before they even start working with your capabilities, you can level set as to the, the functionality that's been set, tested and, certif and, and stated as conformant through the CTP process. We can also work to meet customer demand for standards-based solutions by having a vendor neutral uh, entity such as the SMI Swordfish CTP program validate your implementation to that in that respect. From an end user or customer pers perspective, you get, again, that vendor neutral and objective testing uh, to verify those implementations. You don't have to simply take the vendor's word for it. We also are looking at ensuring your product conformance to industry standards. If you're trying to work across multiple vendor implementations, it helps you with that vendor lock, preventing vendor lock-in and lower cost of ownership by certifying that these things are working um, you know, with a high degree of commonality. And that leads to that improved interoperability of multi-vendor products as well. So how is the program structured and how does it work? From a 
test some, our test submission model is really to work on self-test and validation. We'll provide you the uh, CTP framework and tests, and then you run the tests against your own equipment or software, and then submit the test results for us to validate and post on the Swordfish site as certified results. Where we are right now is testing the tests. As I mentioned earlier, we'd like to see all of these things get completely automated, um, but we're not quite there yet. We are hardening the tests. We're working directly with uh, companies with, with existing implementations. We're working to make sure that these the tests run well against our mockups and that our mockups are accurate according to results of the tests. Very symbiotic. We're also working to make sure that the various emulators also work with CTP so you can be more comfortable picking up any of them and, and, and moving forward. We will eventually get this process uh, you know, completely automated, um, however, with an audit process. So you can come in, submit your results automatically and have everything processed um, and, and uh, ready to publish in a very short time frame. That's our goal, we we're working to get there. What is the logo and, and version strategy here? Um, we have created a, a variant of the SNEA Swordfish logo that is the SNEA Conformance logo. Uh, for when implementations make it through the, the uh, CTP test though, these will be done on a version basis. So clients and implementations alike can very easily verify the level of Swordfish capability, as well as the level of CTP testing uh, and validation that were done uh, on that implementation. That the uh, CTP will be done as um, you know in lockstep with the releases of Swordfish. So this logoing process makes it really easy for clients to be able to match those things together, as well as providing us these really identifiable logos. This is a great way to incorporate and use the Swordfish logo in your implementation, as well as, as uh, identifying uh, and advertising the level of conformance you have uh, achieved through the CTP program. So let's jump in a little bit and talk about what it is we're testing. We've, we've done this a little bit, we've talked about the, te the tests we're using, but um, let's dig in a little bit on what functionality we're testing. So in the Redfish specification, we're looking at a bunch of basic capabilities. This is, do you have your dollar metadata and your OData enumerations in place? Are all of the re required properties in the base schema instrumented? Do, does every URI you use um, conform to the Redfish schema, Redfish and Swordfish schema specifications? Are all those URIs valid? Or did you inadvertently diverge and add objects where they shouldn't be? Those should all be caught in this process. You can see why just from those three descriptions alone, this is a really great thing to start really early in your development cycle, just verifying your, your uh, structure and conformance as you move forward. There's also limited functionality uh, validation. A lot of this, a lot of those previous ones are really, do you have the right things in the right places? But there's some functionality that will be tested like your sessions. And this is because the test framework itself needs to use that capability. The next major piece is conformance to the requirements in the profile. So remember those profiles conform to features and each profile then is tested against those specific requirements. So for example, here, well, here's all of the profiles and the hierarchy. So for example, testing the Swordfish discovery profile, do you have a features registry? Do you have a slash storage? Um, in storage, you know, do you have, a, in, in your storage instance, do you have a volume and storage pool constructs and do you have some form of capacity source? That's the basics it's looking for there. It, these are kind of building blocks. You can see some of these actually build on top of each other, but the idea being that each, that, that a lot of these will have be very, very small. Some will have a fair number more requirements like the ones in the NVMe side that are getting really specific about properties, 
But a lot of the other ones are actually small, very small incremental functionality uh, that uh, matches well with developing increasingly, increasingly more complex implementations. Uh, so as you can see over here, uh, Swordfish Discovery also is the basis for everything, including the NVMe implementations here. All right, so let's move on to the test, um, the tests themselves and the framework and how things are structured. We do leverage the Redfish test framework, but we've uh, instead of using it directly, we've actually wrapped it in a simpler to use environment. So we have a uh, command line based interface and scripts that um, pick exactly the right configurations and exactly the right tests based on your command line parameters. It's also got a very easy to use installation process. It will pull in all of the pieces it needs to get started. So you can put in as options. I want to just test really basic, um, you know, test the service, um, test my capabilities at the service root, or, you know, run general tests. And running the, the official test uh, or general test will trigger that um, interaction with the Swordfish registry as well. So you can, it, you know, by default, it will look at your, at your features registry, pull out the corresponding functionality to test and focus on that, not try testing stuff that's not part of your implementation. You can, we've also provided some overrides to that as, as needed. My recommendation is strongly test early and often. Our CTP framework supports checking compliance level using mockups, um, using the emulators, and then onto real implementations. So you, as you're working your way through the development process, you can continue using CTP testing to validate that you're getting the functionality in the right spot with the right properties, and you're not missing something. Uh, some other things we'll be working on adding to the test framework over time is, again, to get us to that completely automated process. We'll be using a SNEA authenticated self-run um, test result capability so that um, you have to, uh, it, it's a mechanism to ensure that uh, the test results are um, uh, authenticated properly and um, have not been tampered with. So let's talk about then looking at the details of the tests and the test results. At the high level, when you run uh, a, a pass through the conformance test, you'll get a summary result and then detailed results for each, each test. This one actually shows three tests not passing and two that do, just to kind of give you a flavor of what you might see while you're working on active development. Uh, in case I didn't quite say it earlier, the Redfish service level tests are required to, for, um, uh, to pass CTP. And then after that, uh, the Swordfish feature, discovery feature is required. Everything else is a value add feature. If you want to be able to get your implementation passing, you have to pass all the basic Redfish conformance tests. You have to support Swordfish discovery, and then everything else beyond that it turns into additional features that you're able to advertise support for. If you just did that level, you really wouldn't have much of an implementation. So more than likely, you're going to move on in either that NVMe hierarchy or into block provisioning or file provisioning somewhere in the system. So from these, once we get these test results all you know, green. Um, these can be then transformed into results that we post online. Um, that looks a little bit like this. We have a sample out there right now. All of these results will be available at snea.org slash swordfish ctp. We have an example, uh, this example out there, you can see past all the underlying protocol tests, discovery, block provisioning, as well as the three drive ones. This is actually a successful test result that we run against our mockups uh, for our Ethernet attached drive as a way to validate that our mockups were as correct as possible as well. The other thing you'll note here is that only passing features uh, are published. If you, even if you have some other capabilities, um, say, say you had uh, a file provisioning flagged in your features registry and saying you were supported, 
If it does not pass, it will not end up in this test results. We do not intend to publish uh, failures just uh, on the public site, just the, um, just the successful uh, passing capabilities. So a little bit about the tools we've talked about and how, what they look like. So this is um, kind of a view of the registered service test. So this checks again, general conformance to the schema. As you can see from this example here, we have the, you can see this, uh, this particular component that's being tested. This is part of a much longer, uh, much longer report out, but just to give you an idea of what things look like, this is testing, uh, the service route slash slash register slash v1, which is identified right up here. And this the ex results have been expanded to show everything passing, no errors, no warnings for this portion. So this test passed successfully. Uh, so if we want though, and start to look in and say, hmm, you know, I don't have, a, I have everything not passing. What is that going to look like? Well, this is where you'll see uh, you, and, and are able to start moving forward troubleshooting from test results. So this is another, uh, another snippet example. Uh, this one, you can see in this one, this, this particular instance, this links.ethernet interfaces failed because it didn't match, because basically the defined type did not match the implemented type. So there are descriptive messages also at the bottom that tells you what failed, um, also areas of warnings, and these are fairly descriptive. If you need more detailed information, there are also additional um, log messages that you can work your way through to see uh, uh, if, uh, you know, the test itself is failing, or if um, you want to see exactly what command was sent, you can do that through the additional, the detailed logs. Moving on to the individual features test. Um, each test run has, has a param has, you know, parameters and system info available. Uh, that's true for the system test as well. But you can see here, um, this is the conformance test report, and it is testing right here against the Swordfish discovery profile. So this, again, is a fairly simple, straightforward um, and small profile that just looks for a, a, a small set of required capabilities. And the results here show, you know, it tested Redfish uh, slash B1. Do I have the things there I'm supposed to? Yes, I have you know, storage systems and storage systems all exist. Uh, and then moving down in storage, what are the requirements for that? Yes, it exists, we're good. Um, volumes, um, do they exist? Yes, we're good. And on it goes down through, uh, through each profile and, and you're checking each object and matching that against the requirements that are specified in that profile. So here's where we are. We, are you ready to participate? We are working now with companies to test the test, harden those, make it all work with the emulators, as well as starting to work with some systems that are, uh, some new swordfish systems that are coming into the SMI's uh, interoperability lab called the SM lab. Please contact us at storage management at SNEA.org if you're interested in joining the program or feel free to contact me directly at any point. I mentioned briefly those just now, the SM Lab. So the SM Lab is another program very closely related to the Swordfish Conformance Program and the SM, SMIS Conformance Program as well. This is where you can bring in your own equipment early again uh, through the development cycle, bring that in, test your own products, as well as looking at the interoperability with the latest and greatest versions of other companies' products within the SM Lab. If you're interested in bringing your equipment in, again, contact us at storagemanagement.snea.org or uh, check out other information and links on the snea.org website. We have multiple virtual participation options for working as part of the lab. This includes, uh, you know, uh, uh, virtual plug fest, hackathons, testathons, all sorts of um, uh, various permutations and configurations we're having uh, with, you know, working within the uh, SM lab. We also have discounts for dual participation in the SM lab and in CTP.
I hope this was a good overview for you and you got information out of it to hopefully get you thinking about and starting to engage with the Swordfish Conformance Test Program. Here's again just a pointer to where to find more info. All the information about Swordfish is at snea.org slash swordfish. Uh, information on the Conformance Test Programs is also available on that page or to go to snea.org slash swordfish CTP for additional details. Thanks so much. Please take a moment to rate this session with five stars. And if you have any additional feedback, uh, please be sure to reach out. Thanks. Bye.